Alright guys, welcome back to another video with me, Kevin Twist, and we're doing top 5 players Celtic and need to sign, slash want to sign for me to be honest. And number 1, we're going to start off with a player we're being rumoured with, I don't think it's a, it's a, it's not a want for me, but we could do it with another good striker, and the striker is Glenn Murray, apparently we'd be getting him until the end of the season on loan if we were to get him. Celtic yet to make contact, but it's just a rumour in the papers at the moment. Uh, he's played... 14 times this season, 13 in the Premier League, mostly off the bench, I think, I don't, I don't know, um, I don't pay too much attention to Brighton, but I've seen Malpai, has been playing most games, so I'd imagine probably off the bench, and he's played one game in the EFL Cup and got one goal, so 14 appearances to one goal, doesn't look too bad, like it does look pretty bad, but you have to think about it, um, if you think about last season, he was pretty good, in the last few seasons he's got a couple goals against big teams as well, he's a good finisher, he's not the fastest of players, but uh, I got told by Granite Tooth as a free go check him out as well. Um, he told me he's not really someone to take any defenders on, but he's there in the box to finish all the chances pretty much that you give him. So he gives us a different approach. You know, you have Griff, he's a bit more of a, a rough player. You know, he likes to get in there against his defenders. Eddie is more of that luxury striker. And if we brought in Glenn Murray until the end of the season, we'd have that more old fashioned striker, you would have three different things. And then you have Bale who um he's Bale. Yeah. Um Bale I think his time could be up it's uh, well not yet, I'd still probably give him another season to try and prove it. He looked really good in the preseason. He looked good against Hearts but they've been dreadful this season so I don't know. So yeah, now on to another player. It is big Victor Wanyama only making four appearances so far this season. Two in the Premier League, one in the Champions League, and one in the EFL Cup. Getting one yellow card in between those four games. But he was amazing last time. Of course, the biggest moment everyone knows when Yama for was um, the Barcelona goal. And if not that, um, Spaghetti. So yeah, um, he was a class player last time. And I think he'd be good again. It would cost about 7 8 million to get him off Tottenham. If we were to get him on loan, apparently it cost about 5 million. So I'd rather just buy him outright, pay the extra like three million more, and just keep him because he, because of his age, it's he'd be there still technically. There's a chance he would be there when Scott Brown retires, which means we still have at least that solid CDM. And yeah, I think he'd be a great signing. Uh, of course, being under Lennon before. And yeah, that's my number two out of five. Number three, Andras Sporar. I hope this deal happens. I hope the Glenn Murray thing doesn't mean we wouldn't get him. I prefer Andras Sporar over Glenn Murray because Glenn Murray would only be loan. Andras Sporar would only be a couple of million. And apparently Bale could potentially go the other way, is the rumour at the moment. I don't know. I'd prefer to have him for a couple of million. Uh, his stats are amazing in the Fortuna Liga. He's played 11 games in the league and got 12 goals and 1 assist and 1 yellow card. In the Europa League, not the Europa League qualifiers, he's played 6 games, 5 goals, 2 assists. And then the qualifiers, he's got, this, oh wait, this is the Champions League qualifiers, he's got 2 games, 1 goal, which isn't too bad. Then in the Europa League qualifiers, he has 6 games, 1 goal, 2 assists, 1 yellow card. That's not too bad. And then the League Cup, 1 game to a goal. He's doing very well, I'd say. He's being a pretty exceptional striker this season. And someone I'd 100% like to have. He's, he's a bit younger than Griffiths. A bit older than Eddie, to be fair. But I think he'd still be there by the time Eddie would eventually leave. As much as I don't want to lose Eduard. Eddie is such a great player. And of course, everyone wants to be him. He's got one of the best chance in world football. You know. He's, he's just a great player to have. And then, of course, we've got a third player, because why wouldn't we? And, yeah, you, you just have to think about this one thing. And, well, it's Ki Sung Young. He's been recently linked with us. Quite a lot. And, is he the player that we need? Maybe not, because I don't think he gets in there over Christie, Brown, 
or McGregor, but he would be good depth-wise, but I still play Nicham over him. Maybe between him and Rogic, because, or Rogic, however you pronounce that. Uh, I think it's Rogic, because you pronounce Gogic like Gogic, so it's like I don't know. Um, but yeah. The transfer market says it'd be about 4 million. The rumour at the moment is that his wages are quite high, which is the thing stopping anything from happening, apparently. But I think it's more of a, not a need, but more of a, just like a want. Like, I'm more just like, I'd like to have him, but we don't need to have him. A lot of players, Philippe Benkovic, every Celtic fan surely wants Benkovic back at the club. You know, Jozo is currently out injured. We're playing Beaton. Beaton has been decent at centre half, but he's not a centre half. To be fair, I kind of prefer Beaton centre half than actually as a CDM, to be honest, at the moment. Because he hasn't got that pace in midfield. But on to Benkovic, of course. Benkovic, he was great last season. Uh, formed that partnership with Ayr that was pretty solid. And yeah. And if you brought him in on loan. I think it'd be a proper like challenge. It would mean if Julian and I ever had a bad spell, they know there's a good centre half ready to take their spot that that season, of course, until the end of the season it would have been. Or it would be, I mean. Um so you know, they'd always have that thought so they'd always want to play their best and of course Benkovic is already a good centre half so he would already play some games and it would help us with the Europa League. I think that's what all these signings pretty much do. They all would add that, and the good thing Andrade Spora would be able to play in the Europa League. I noticed UEFA have now added you can list uh, three players a season that have played in Europe as your player for Europe. So he would be one of three available to us, which would be pretty good. And if we got one Yama, that could be a second one. So yeah, that's that's always a thing to think about. Um, you always have to think about this kind of stuff when it comes to this, especially that we can do decent in Europe this season, especially getting such a good draw in the round of 32. Um, you've got to think there's surely a big what if, or can we do this with the current squad? I think we can probably realistically with the current squad get to the quarterfinals, but if we make some big signings in January. We could be in Poland by the end of the season. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It is possible. Will it happen? I don't know. But it is possible. So yeah. So Benkovic at number four. Number five. This is more of a younger striker we're also looking at. By the way, this doesn't mean I want all. F I don't want free strikers. I just I'm saying one of these. But if we get this player, I'd say two of them. It's Campbell from Stoke City. Um, his stats are all right. I'd say 21 appearances in all competitions to eight goals and two assists. It isn't the worst comeback for like quite a young player. Um, He's 20 years old, so you know he's still got a lot of potential to become quite a good striker. Transfer market rate him about half a million. I think he'd still be probably a bit more than that to get, especially when he's on such good form. One of the better players Stoke have had this season, and of course it's not been that good a season for them. So to have a player like him that's doing well in a very bad season for Stoke, of course it's picking up at the moment now, but. Up until that point, it wasn't the best time for Stoke being so low on the table. Um, so yeah, that's my five. But here are some players that Celtic are looking at. We're apparently scouting Zimbabwe International. Um, let me quickly see his name. Tino Kadawer. I probably butchered that, but that's one of the players we're looking at. And then also Lewis Gibson from Everton. To get him when his contract expires at the end of the season, apparently. So, yeah, that's the transfer roundup pretty much for Celtic. And five players that Celtic need slash want. Slash what I want for Celtic to sign. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.